I want to slide over to some of the critiques that Mark Hyman had. He, he right. dedicated an entire podcast to this uh, study. And I actually messaged Mark about this. I haven't heard back. But one of his critiques was that the control diet, the omnivorous diet, was not a healthy omnivorous diet. And he seemed to, to have issue with a couple of components of the diet. One is he seemed to think that their added sugar intake either – increased through the study or was significantly higher than the vegan group for um, added sugars that was. And he also didn't like the fact that the omnivorous diet had about five to six serves of whole grains or starches a day. And he, he kind of used that to say that, you know, in his view, this meant that this was not a healthy omnivorous diet. And his argument being that saturated fat is really only bad in the context of a background diet with a lot of carbs. And he says, saturated fat will help increase LDL particle size, raise HDL, etc. if you don't eat it with carbs. It's really what you don't eat it with. Saturated fat is not in and of itself inherently bad. For most of us, it's okay. Yeah, so uh – it was probably hard to tell from the figures that we put in the paper. That's why we're coming out with a completely separate paper that lists baseline and four weeks and eight weeks for within vegan group, within the omnivore group, and then between them. And if you go through it and you look at the number one graphic in this paper, you'll see that the healthy eating index increased in the omnivores relative to their baseline study. And that, that increase wasn't due to any one thing. It was due to multiple things. But they ate more vegetables. They reduced their added sugars. They reduced their refined grains. And many of the things between vegans and omnivores were not different. They both increased in a healthy way. I probably have to look at a table's worth of, of values, which I have in front of me right now if we were to take the time to look. But without taking the time to look, that criticism is unfair. If you look at this table, you will see that there were many improvements. Their grain intake did not go up on the omnivorous diet, if anything. And, and added sugars actually went down. Significantly, yes. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at that, and I appreciate these aren't published yet, right? These, nope. these tables. So people will get the chance to review them. But the in the omnivorous group, there was you know, an increase in intake of animal protein, eggs, meat, and fish. And then there was less calories, if anything. I don't think it was significant, but less calories from carbs in the omnivorous group. And that is all things that uh, someone like Mark Hyman would actually recommend. So the point that I'm making here is if anything, through that trial, those subjects were moving more towards a diet that, that someone like him would kind of put forward. Yes. We spoke about his critique of not having HDL in the abstract. We've spoken about LDL uh, cholesterol. We've spoken about you know why the documentary included DEXA scans, but they weren't in your study. These are all things that he raised. He and others did uh, raise a concern about the length of the study with respect to observing deficiencies. And so his position was, and I'm quoting again, by definition, a vegan diet is nutrient deficient. Have you thought about the duration of the study and what we can or cannot say about the nutritional adequacy of it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so one of the ones that comes up is B12. Uh, that certainly is everybody's knee-jerk reaction for a vegan diet, that it's deficient in B12. So... A little known fact that people don't appreciate is animals don't actually make B12 either when we eat animal food. B12 is made by microorganisms, uh, bacteria that's on the dirt on food, and animals eat dirty food. The reason they have B12 is because they ate dirty food. So we could eat, as humans, dirty food, but we're probably not going to. Or we could eat animals. Or we could fortify our food or take a supplement. So of any vitamin and mineral, Nothing has a lower recommended daily allowance than B12. It's three micrograms a day. Not milligrams, not grams. It's three micrograms a day. And the most deleterious effects of that long-term are neuro, 
degenerative disease, losing the myelin sheathing uh, on your nerve cells. And it can take a decade for that to manifest. So to propose a study with LDL cholesterol as an outcome, which can change in two weeks, if you change from diet A to diet B in a steady way, your LDL will change for two weeks and then that change will plateau. And then why don't you just keep going for 10 years to see if the B12 was deficient? You, you couldn't ever make that argument unless B12 was the primary variable and it wasn't. So when you pick a duration of a study, you're more obligated to pick the primary outcome than an exploratory outcome. And B12 was certainly exploratory and expected that it would go down. Yeah, why, why include it if you already know it's, it's going to go down? These subjects, I'm assuming, were not supplementing with B12. Yeah, but they probably got some in fortified food. But interestingly, so we, you know, sort of as an adherence check, we wanted to show that the vegans went from some level of cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, to zero. That's only in animal foods. So that was pretty cool that it went to zero and it stayed relatively the same for the omnivores. Likewise, to show that the B12 drops precipitously is a sign of adherence to the diet. And it, it could be a follow-up of, well, if you're gonna continue to do this, given the importance of B12, you should make sure you take a B12 supplement or get some fortified food, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, yeah, I thought it was somewhat rich of, of Mark to kind of call out this nutrient deficiency thing. And again, I know Mark, I think he's a nice guy. Um, and I hope that he would keep me honest as well if I was kind of inconsistent because at the start of his podcast, he says, I'm a big proponent of supplements because our food just isn't as nutritious as it once was and then goes on to promote a supplement company. So it seems like a, a you know, some, what of a double standard to me. I'm going to leave that untouched. Mm -hmm. Yes.